Hey there, everyone. Uh, this is the latest video that I'm making for a machine that I'm going to have on Craigslist pretty soon. Uh, and this particular machine is the Kenmore 158.1941 model. And that may not mean much to most of you unless you're a collector, but uh, I've, I've mentioned this in other videos before when I've had machines of this era, but this is a Japanese-made, all-metal, all-steel um, sewing machine, and it was made in the mid-70s. This one was made probably around 1974, 1975, and uh, it has the distinction, and I think I mentioned this in another video of mine, it's, um, I call it Last of the Mohicans because this is one of the very last home sewing machines ever made that is all metal. <clears throat> you know, it's not made with plastic gears. Many of the other manufacturers had already switched over and had basically started to cheapen their machine construction due to cost. But because Sears was quite the retailer back then, uh, they could go to a manufacturer. In this case, it was the Maruzin Company in Japan. And they could say, we want ours all metal. And after about 1976, just a few years later, you know, they finally capitulated and all the, all the machines after that are, uh, in my opinion, lesser and lesser in quality. And they are certainly not what, uh, what I call heirloom quality. This is heirloom quality, meaning, you know, many of the machines I restore have already been in use for generations. And they're going to be in use, or they should be, uh, they certainly can be for more generations because they were made so well. And this is one of them. And because this is sort of the end of the vintage era, the golden era, as I like to call it, um, you're going to see a lot of features. So compared to a 1930s sewing machine, um, you're going to see far more features in this machine because, um, you know, there were advances in technology and there were also changes in fashion. One of the things you'll notice about this machine that is unique is that it's one of the only vintage machines that has free arm capability. And uh, they made many versions. In fact, there, there were flatbed versions of this machine, but this one is, in fact, a free arm. It's also called a convertible machine. I'm going to remove part of the deck here so you can see. Um, whenever you want to access your bobbin, there's a little door down here where you can get uh, your bobbin case and bobbin, very easy to access. And then if you want to use the free arm portion of the machine, you simply push a little button on the deck, and the deck slides off, or this section of it does. And those of you who have a free arm will know this, and many new machines have this, but, you know, in the vintage era, uh, free arms were a little slow to catch on in the United States. And so there were a couple of European manufacturers that did these, but uh, for the most part, they were not as common. They were a little bit more expensive to manufacture, slightly more. But anyway, uh, you know, many of you don't use free arms, but if you do, it may be because, uh, I'll take this sample here, pretend like you've got, say, a cuff. Maybe it's a narrow cuff. Maybe it's children's clothes. Um, you know, uh, you're, you're working on small items, uh, even baby doll clothes that people sew. But uh, you can sew anything on a flatbed machine, and people have for <clears throat> more than a century and a half. But for those of you who like the convenience of a free arm, this is one of your only options in what I call high-quality vintage machines. So... Um, but anyway, I'm going to put the deck lid back on because I want to do some sewing demonstration for you guys. And just a few other things to say about the machine. The machine comes out in the 70s, and it has features that the earlier machines did not. <clears throat> One of those features is called stretch stitches, or some of you may call them reverse stitches. Now, when I restore machines, I do a lot of test stitching to make sure that everything's functioning properly before I put them on Craigslist. And I've already done some, but I'm going to go back over and let you guys see uh, how she sews. And the controls on this machine are wonderfully simple to operate. There's not a lot to study. Uh, it's very intuitive. And when you go, you basically have two sets. All the stitches are built in. And you have two sets. You have a lever here that when it's pointing toward the white dot, all of the white color-coded stitches are stretch, right? And then later on, you're going to see me flip over to the red dot, and that's going to be what most of us would call standard stitching, whether it's straight or zigzag. But anyway, I'm going to begin by sewing uh, a stitch I'm really fond of. It's one of the stretch stitches you can choose, and it is called pine leaf. Now, what's significant about that primarily is the fact that it's a great uh, over edge stitching, stitch. It will remind some of you of a serger stitch. This is not a serger, but when you're trying to sort of 
um, <clears throat> protect raw edges and woven fabrics. This is kind of a really neat stitch to have, and I'm going to turn her on here and show you how she works. Let's see, make sure I have my settings right. One of the things you may notice, if you can see, you know, obviously fabric always feeds away from you as a sewing machine, as the feed dogs are moving it. But of course, with a stretch stitch, you'll notice that it kind of hops back just a little bit as it moves. Maybe three steps forward, two, uh, one step back, maybe something like that. But what that does is it builds in um, a little bit of slack into the stitch. The stitches are tight, but they are loose enough so that if you're doing sportswear, uh, knits, you can basically, um, and of course you can back tack with this as well. <clears throat> this allows you to, um, uh, it basically allows you to, to sew fabrics that would otherwise pop or break uh, conventional stitches. Um, let's see, I'm going <clears throat> to come back out. So I'm going to flip this lever over to red, and any of my red stitches are going to be considered non-reverse or standard stitch. <clears throat> and I'm going to come over to my option here. Let me turn this up. Now, I've got z either zigzag or straight stitching is going to be here. And I'm going to probably, let's go to straight. This is my stitch length, by the way, and this is my stitch width. So I'm going to come over. and find a, a blank row here so you guys can see me sewing. I've already done this, but I want to do it again for you in the video. And I'm going to be in my longest stitch length. And you'll see I can, of course, slow my needle down if I want to, but I can also sew pretty quickly. And I'll come back over and I'll do a shorter length stitch. <clears throat> And short length stitches are used sometimes for things like knits uh, or even in quilting. Very quiet machine. This is a class 15 oscillating type. Very easy to find, you know, bobbins for it. There's nothing obscure about it, really. Um, this machine will come with a lot of attachments and feet. It takes what's called a super high shank foot. And uh, again, I'm going to be, you'll see this in the listing, I'm going to have a number of feet laid out that will come with the machine. Um, they're worth quite a lot if you go on eBay and get them. But you can also get, and I may have, if I have it, I'll include this in the listing, they have an adapter. So let's say you have low shank feet, which are the most common, and you already have a machine. You say, you know, I'd like to use some of the feet I have. This adapter is wonderful because it fits onto the uh, presser bar, and then you can use any of your low shank feet. So you have lots of options here with feet. Um, it should not be an issue. And I believe I also, excuse me, I believe I also have a buttonhole attachment that goes with this as well. Um, let's see, and then I'll come over. I've already done some zigzagging, but I'm going to come over and do, I'm trying to find some blank space here on my fabric. And I'll do some zigzagging for you, and you'll see her zigzag. Let's see here. I'll come over to the widest zigzag. And the zigzag, she works beautifully. And of course, you back tack there as well. I'll pull this up so that you can, hopefully in this light, you'll be able to see. <clears throat> yeah, this should be pretty good light for seeing the stitches. Here, of course, you're seeing my, my straight uh, long length stitch. And you'll see the short ones, the little the micro dots, as I call them. My zigzag, and then there's that really neat pine leaf. And you've got smocking, you've got, <clears throat> you've got blind stitch, you've got uh, stretch blind. You've got a number of stitches that are really useful. And again, it's not a surprise because in the 70s, knit fabrics, everyone, men, women, were all wearing knits, these big polyester knit fabrics um, that were very popular at the time. And it was, they were so popular that uh, Sears even had a special foot and a special set of, these are basically ballpoint needles, but they're called Q-needles. So if you're sewing knits, they even had a special foot just for that. That's how popular knits were at the time, and Sears was big enough they could go and say, hey, we want our own special attachment for a particular knit fabric that was popular in the 70s. So any of you who remember the 70s will know this. Knits were just 
To say they were popular is an understatement, and that's why you see this and other machines bringing in straight, uh, st stretch stitching. Okay, so now I'm going to take, this is my, my seam test. You guys often see me do this with uh, my sewing machines. I want to see a machine go through, this is sort of medium, light medium weight cotton, and then, but you have the, a dense seam from a cargo pant, and then on the other side you have another seam. So it's going to go through two of these dense seams, and um, this machine has, all of my machines have different ways. They're all strong and they have a lot of power at the needle, but they do it <clears throat> with different mechanisms. This machine was copying Bernina in a way. They have the high shank feet, and <clears throat> or super high, and then they also have a double belt system with a pulley that gets extra power from the motor. So I think you'll see, make sure I'm on straight stitch here. I think you will see, um, in one of the pictures of my overhaul, you may see those, those two belts in the pulley there. So I'm coming across, and the machine goes right over those two seams, and you know it, it doesn't complain at all, right? A strong sewing machine should be able to do this. It shocks many people when they learn that new sewing machines, the ones you'll buy in the store for the home, many of them are not strong enough to do this, uh, unless you spend thousands of dollars. So I'm gonna come back, I'll watch my edge there, and again, uh, it goes right over, and it really does not miss, it doesn't complain, and let me hold this up so you all can see this. You'll see that the stitches come, the stitches come straight across. I'm sure I'm getting in focus here. There we go. Uh, this is a pink thread, so it's not the greatest contrast. There we go. And you can see how straight they are. They don't lose their tension. Here's the blue on the other side. And that's the, one of the hallmarks of a great machine. Now, Kenmore's, and I forgot to show this in my other Kenmore machine listing, that turquoise one you see on Craigslist, is <clears throat> Sears had something that they specified that was really different. You could take the presser foot, here it is down, when you pull it up, you have, you know, sort of your standard space, but you can also lift up again and get almost three quarters of an inch, almost an inch. And you're not going to sew anything that's an inch thick. What you can do, though, is you can get things like this really wide, this is a heavy upholstery fabric that you might use for, oh, I don't know, a slip cover even. And I'm gonna put it right under the foot and begin to sew with it. This does a couple of things. It shows the power of this machine, which is wonderful. But it also shows that you can, you can kind of maneuver bulky things there. Uh, those of you who do seat covers, um, Flatbed machines are great for pillows, but if you're ever going to do an actual seat cover, you might want a free arm. It might help you. Now, let's see. I'm going to show you the blue side. The pink's going to be very hard to see, but you see these, you know, the stitches are beautiful. And then lastly, I'm going to do some garment leather. Uh, so many of the people who buy machines from me say, you know, I really want to sew some leather. If you sew garment leather, that is... Um, you know, it's, it's flexible, it's <clears throat> lightweight leather. You can sew that. You would use a leather tip needle. I think I have a size 14 fabric needle in here at the moment. But I just wanted you to see this. And of course you can get roller feet and special feet if you need them. Uh, I believe this will feed fine because it did, it fed very well in my, during my testing. So we'll go again with straight. And you hear it just, just going right through. And this is one of the reasons people come to me uh, or they're looking for vintage machines. I'll even do some zigzag for you guys. Let's see, change my width again. And it'll even zigzag for you when you are sewing garment leather. So let me take this out and I'll show you the stitches that it's making. And you can see in the leather, the stitches are, the, the stitches are fine. This machine is um, remarkable in that it was, again, all metal, all steel, and it is, again, as I said, one of the only free arms that you can get in uh, vintage machines. So if any of you are interested in learning more about it, please email me, or you can set up a time to come and see the machine. You can come and do some test sewing on it, or if you are new to sewing, I will demonstrate it for you and uh, be happy to answer any questions for you. I appreciate you watching the video. Thank you.